In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the part model from the SOLIDWORKS Intro to Modeling and Drawing assignment for IME 144. If you look, here's the model we're going to create. The first step is to kind of analyze the drawing and figure out how you're going to approach the solid model. I feel the quickest or the least amount of tools is the best way to make the model. So what I plan on doing is taking this overall profile from the front view, drawing it, extruding it out to two and a half inches, then creating a cut right here in the, uh, from the right view. Well, actually we'll create it from the top surface or we could create it from the right. Create that cut and then create the holes, the hole on the top view here. So let's go ahead and move on to SOLIDWORKS. Once we have SOLIDWORKS open, our first step is to go to File, New, and select the part environment, press OK. At this point, computer's a little slow, but at this point, we're going to go to our features. We're going to basically extrude out, going back to the drawing, this profile. So because this is the front view, we're going to draw that profile on the front plane. So moving back to SOLIDWORKS, we're going to click on Extrude. We're going to click on the front plane. And that brings up all of the sketch tools that allow us to create the 2D profile and extrude it out into a 3D object. Now remember, this is the origin. You want to lock some of your geometry into the origin or relate some of your geometry to the origin using dimensioning. I'm going to use this tool, the line tool, to go ahead and basically draw a vertical line, press escape, I'm going to grab the line tool again, draw a horizontal line, come up, draw a line like this, and then I'm going to end this at this point. That now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and draw a circle right up here, two concentric circles. At this point, I'm going to draw the lines connecting to them but I'm going to locate this circle off the origin first. So moving back to the drawing, you'll see that these are this radius is concentric with this hole, and it's two by two inches. So if I move back to SolidWorks, I can go ahead and use my smart dimension to dimension from there to there, 2.0. Then I can go from this edge to that edge, 2.0. At this point, we want it, we've given the locations for the two circles. We now want to go ahead and do the size. So to do the size, I'm going to go back to the drawing. You'll see the radius is 1.25, so 2.5 diameter. And the through hole right here, there's two of them at 1 inch through. So I use smart dimension to dimension the through hole first, 1.0. Then I'll dimension the radius, which will end up trimming away in a little bit. I'll click on that and type in 2.5. So this feature is fully located. The next thing we want to do is we want to make this thickness 1.0, along with this thickness right here, 1.0. At this point, most of our features are located. One last thing, if you notice, this line is blue and it's still slightly underdefined, because if it doesn't know how far to go in this direction. So looking back at the drawing, overall the part length is six inches. So I'm going to move back to SolidWorks and use the Smart Dimension tool to go from this line right here and type in 6.0. We now have fully constrained geometry minus the geometry needed to connect the, the bottom profile to the circle up here. Now, I'm going to grab my line tool, click on this line endpoint to start it, and I'm going to come up and start making, touch the circles outside profile, and I need to create a tangent relationship. So as I slowly move up the circle, you'll see the tangent icon shows up. It's the circle with the line tangent to it and the connection endpoint relationship. So when I click my mouse at that point, I know that that, I'm going to press escape, 
I note that that line is connected and tangent to the radius. That's exactly what we wanted. Next, I'm going to show you how to take this line. We're going to connect the line down here. We're going to come up to the part and we're going to end up placing it right here connected. And now if we go back to the drawing and we see, if we look back at the drawing, you'll see that we have 120 degrees given and then we'll make a tangent relationship. So let's do that. Going back to SOLIDWORKS, click on Smart Dimension. If I want to create an angle between two lines, I click on one line, the other line, and drag out the angle. I can type in 120 and it creates a 120 degree arc. However, if I zoom in, you'll see that it's no longer tangent. So I'm going to go up to the Add Relationship. I'm going to click on this line, this circle, and click Tangent. And it'll bring the line up to the correct location. At this point, you'll see that everything is fully defined for my profile. The only issue is I have some extra lines I really don't need. So we're going to use the Trim Tool. The Trim Tool is up here in the top menu bar, in the Sketch Tools. I can trim or extend entities. I just can, I want to show you what Extend does. So if I click on Extend, if I wanted to extend that line to the next location, it'll do that. Although, that's not really needed, so I'm going to press Control z Just wanted to show you how the Extend Tool worked. Now, the Trim Tool, when I click on Trim Entities, I'm going to go ahead and just pick Trim to Closest and trim away all the geometry I don't need for my profile. Now if you look, we have a fully defined profile to the dimensions that are shown in this drawing right here. We'll add the champ for later on. So back to SOLIDWORKS. Once I'm done with my two-dimensional sketch, I hit Exit Sketch to go out into the three-dimensional realm and give it a distance to extrude it back. I'm going to go ahead this time and pick midplane. That means I'm going to extrude out symmetrically on each side of the sketch, kind of keeping the middle of the origin or the origin in the middle of this extrusion. Looking back at the drawing, you'll see that it's two and a half inches. So when I go back to SOLIDWORKS, I technically could pull this arrow out and try to hit exactly two and a half inches, but really it's easier to come over to the dimension over here, the depth, and type in 2.5 and press enter. In order to accept this feature, I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. Now notice, I was able to create a cutout with an actual hole in it because I had two closed profiles. So the outside closed profile created all the material, the inner closed profile created a cutout. Now, looking at this part, if I move back to SOLIDWORKS, you're going to see I have to go ahead and create the cutout here. Now this could be done multiple ways. I think the easiest way is to do a cutout on the back surface. I could also do a cutout from the top surface and cut up. But again, the easiest way would be to come from one of the, the back side or the sides, the right or the left side of the part. So moving back to SOLIDWORKS, I could cut on this face or I could cut on this face. I'm going to go ahead and pick this back face. So what I first do is I select Extruded Cut. I go ahead and I click on this left face. In order to get the view normal to my vision or to my sketch, I'm going to hit Space Bar and Normal 2. Now I'm drawing on this back plane of the part. What I'll end up doing is I'll pick a, a basically a corner rectangle. I'll start the corner of the rectangle right on the line and drag it up. Notice I'm dragging it higher than what, what I need with, than the actual extruded material. That's fair game. As long as the, the profile cuts a little bit of material, you can cut air as well. Now, I'm going to use my smart dimension tool to dimension from this edge to the rectangle's edge and type in 0.875 enter. The next feature I need or the next dimension I need to place is this dimension, which defines how thick thick each one of these protrusions will be. So 
I'm going to click from this edge to this edge, drag up and drag out, and type in 0.875. Now notice, I still have an undefined sketch right here. I press escape, I can drag this up and down because the height isn't defined by a smart dimension. But it really doesn't need to be in this case, as long as it goes fully, as long as it's fully above the material. If it's down here, you're going to leave some material above the rectangle. So I'm just going to drag it back up and hit exit sketch. At this point, I'm going to rotate around to show you the, the model. And I'm going to go ahead and select through all. It's going to cut everything that's, that's basically wherever there's material, all the way through the model. So when I hit check mark, we have our, our cutout defined. Let's go back and look at the drawing and see what else we need to do. So looking at the drawing, you'll see we need to go ahead and create a couple more features. We need to create the radii on the part. There's four by, by 0.5 for the radii. And we need to create the hole. Usually I leave fillets and chamfers for my last operation on my model. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the one inch through hole on the top of the part. That's one inch by one and a quarter inch off the edges of the part. So at this point, we move back to SolidWorks, and in order to create that cutout, we want to do it on this plane right here. So I'm going to select on Extruded Cut, click on this top plane of the model, press Spacebar, and Normal 2. Then I'm going to grab my Circle tool and place a circle in the center of the part. I press Escape to end the circle tool, and then I grab my Smart Dimension tool to, si to size the circle at 1.0 inches, and then locate the circle at one and a quarter and one inch. That fully defines the circle size and location. At this point, now that I'm done drawing everything I need in my sketch, I'm going to click on Exit Sketch rotate the part just to kind of show you, and just go up to next, which will cut up to the next surface, and hit check mark. Now you'll see I've created three features over here. If I had to go back at any time and modify the feature, I'm going to show you how to do that. Like for example, on the Boss Extrude, I could right click, I could go to Edit Feature, that allows me to change the 3D portion of the part. So if I thought it was supposed to be three inches instead of two and a half, I could change that. And notice everything has changed. Made the gap a little bit larger because we controlled the 0.875 and the 0.875 with the sketch for the cutout through the middle. Now that's incorrect, so I'm going to right click back on the boss extrude, go to edit feature, and change it back to 2.5 inches. The next thing I'm going to do so I'm going to show you how to modify the 2D sketch. So if I go back to Boss Extrude, right click, Edit Feature edits the 3D portion of the model, but Edit Sketch will allow you to edit the 2D portion. In fact, if I hit Spacebar Normal 2, and I realize, man, this was supposed to be at 2.25, I could key that in and all the geometry changes. And now I could exit Sketch, and my model has changed very quickly and updated everything else. But because that change is incorrect compared to the drawing that was given to you, I'm going to go right back into Boss Extrude, right click, Edit Sketch, and change this back to 2.0, and then Exit Sketch. So that's the two different things you can modify on extrusions and cutouts. You can change the feature, which changes the 3D portion, or you can change the sketch, which changes the 2D sketch portion, or allows you to modify them. The last two things we've got to do on this model are create the fillets and create the chamfer on the bottom. So looking back at the drawing, we're going to first cover the champ we're going to first cover the fillets. Then we're going to add the chamfer around the part. So the fillets, there's four of them at 0.5 radius. So when I go back to SolidWorks, I go and I use my fillet tool. Notice it's fillet and chamfer. 
two different in conditions that are commonly found on mechanical parts. So when I select fill it, I get to key in the radius over here in the ribbon bar. So if I key in 0.5 and I click on the edge of the part, you'll notice because I have full preview clicked, it shows a little preview of what the radius or the model is going to look like afterwards. So I go around and I click the vertical edges I want to put a fillet on. When I'm done selecting all four edges, I hit the check mark and I've created a fillet feature. Last but not least is to add a chamfer around the bottom of the part. So when I go back to the drawing, you'll see there's a 50 thou 0.05 by 45 degree chamfer on the bottom of the part. In order to put the chamfer on, the tool is underneath fillet in the drop down menu. When I select chamfer, by default 45 degrees is the chamfer's angle. It's the most common angle for a chamfer based off cutting tools that are available. And the distance is 0 0.05. So when I go down to the bottom, if I click the entire face, notice it would chamfer the hole. So I don't actually want the hole chamfered. So I'm going to right click over here and clear selections and just pick the outside profile instead. Now when I rotate back and I hit check mark, hit space bar and isometric view, you'll see we have the model fully created with all the appropriate dimensions. If I go back to the engineering drawing, you'll see the pictorial view looks exactly like the view I have here in the SOLIDWORKS part environment. So my last step is to save our part. I literally go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this part on Part 2 Video Example, and press Save. Now join me in the next video to create the engineering drawing for this assignment. See you soon, or talk to you soon.